Absolute return funds typically aim to provide investors with exposure to risky assets like equities, but with a certain degree of downside protection. The protection is provided for by hedging portfolios from capital losses using derivative instruments. This style of investing is especially useful to investors that are nearing retirement, but can be applied to a much wider range of investor needs. Evan Murray, he's head of Absolute Return Funds at Stanley. He joins us now to explain. Let's begin with an explanation. Just what is it? In simple terms, in layman's terms, when you talk absolute funds, what are you saying? Thank you. So absolute return funds are designed to capture as much of the investment upside in the markets as possible. But very importantly, the aim is to preserve capital. So you don't want to share in the losses that are frequently associated with markets. A 2008 type event, for example, where investors lost a significant amount of their capital, we try and avoid that. Yeah. Now, how often that would that happen, you know, those type of events? I mean, those are like rare here and there. And also the world is changing so much that now we're in an environment where what was normal last year is no longer normal. So hence speak, people speak about the new normal in those kind of uh, words. I think it's, good, it's a good point. I think what's important for me to maybe stress is also that absolute return funds, just to complete the previous argument, yeah. are typically designed to be benchmarked, with other words, uh, re referred to as CPI plus five type funds. So in right. other words, what you design to have is in the long term, a CPI plus five type outcome. But again, it's an absolute thing. So you don't, you don't have a loss of capital. It's an interesting point that you make because the perception in the market is that over a longer time period, like five years, for example, you don't have risk in equities. Yeah. If you actually look at the distribution of returns, you find that 20, 30 percent of the time on a one year basis, equities are negative. So typically, I think it's very difficult if you are, say, for example, a person close to retirement yeah. and you need to live on your capital. For example, if you live on a preservation uh, or, or a living annuity, what are you going to do if you have these drawdowns of, 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 of capital? Yeah, I just so wanted to clarify important. a small point about CPI plus five. Yeah. It's consumer price inflation plus Quite five percentage points. Quite correct. Okay. Quite correct. Please, so, so, come so, in. so the returns are obviously real even, and you've got to balance the way I kind of understand it is that you've got to balance the risk that you're taking in, in equities, <coughs> which gives you those returns against the, the chance of a downside risk. and. I mean, the chance of the downside risk, it's so unexpected, no one saw 2008. That's so very important. Very much used, I understand, as almost a transition of uh, a, a person that's economically active uh, going into retirement and they just need to protect against that, that capital loss. The point that you make is very important. None of us can foresee the future. So a 2008 type event is, is a tail type event. What we try and do, and this is the one differentiating factor for absolute return funds, is to ensure that we've got a risk management policy and framework in place. So at any point in time, what we will do is to limit the amount that you can lose. So in other words, even if we can't foresee that there's a certain problem coming, we know that this, the maximum that we will lose is, is, is capped. Okay, so that's quite an important point. I mean, Correct. what you're saying is you don't try in time or you don't try and build in the protection when you think there's a problem coming. You're effectively covering the portfolio all of the time. Absolutely. I think and that's a very important point to make. So also important, I mean, uh, absolute return funds are multi-asset investments. So they do benefit from the fact that you've got diversification amongst asset classes. That's very important. But even that on its own is not enough. In an environment like you refer to at the moment where there's a lot of money flooding the system, who knows when that money is being withdrawn? Who knows when the situation normalizes and the money is being drawn away? What will happen then? What we're saying in an absolute return type proposition is we, we, we don't care. What we're going to do is to pr at least protect your capital. Yeah. Very important philosophy and a very important principle because by avoiding those drawdowns, by avoiding the loss of capital, you actually build a platform from which you can grow. Yeah. So let's talk about how then you preserve that capital. What strategies do you use to preserve that capital? That's a very good point. So typically what we would do is, as I said, we benefit from asset class diversification. So typically a fund might have 50% of its assets in uh, growth assets, property, equity for example, and 50% in, 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 in defensive type assets, bonds, money market type investments for example. What will happen then is in the areas where we can provide protection, explicit bespoke protection in the form of maybe derivatives, we will go out and protect those assets. You, don't, you can't protect everything. So the fact is what you try and do is to say, what is the amount of risk that I can tolerate at any specific point in time? Yeah. And then say, what is my risk appetite? 
and then to limit the drawdown that you can achieve at any point in time. Yeah. So even if we just take the example uh, in a portfolio where you're targeting CPI plus 5%, yeah. that's effectively, let's call it 11% at the moment, Correct. okay? You're going to use uh, 60 or 50 or 60% percent. you're going to put into equities? Yes. And then the balance, how do you pay for the, the protection? How does that work? Where, no, does so that, where, so do you, where do you buy that insurance from? Yeah, that's a great question. So typically what you can do is in the derivative market, what you can say is, look, I typically have to invest in something that generates growth, and that's going to be equity or property. But how much growth can I expect out of a specific counter? So you would look at your view, and you might say, I'm buying protection on a specific counter. Uh, if it falls by more than 10%, I'm willing to pay for that protection, so insurance. Or typically what I might do is to forsake some of the upside on that if the market f runs by more than 40 or 50% or whatever yeah. over a certain time period. So there are different ways of achieving that. Typically what we would do is to try and benefit from upside in the equity market as such and limit then the systematic risk in the market or in the portfolio. Yeah. But even the world is changing as I said and what was defensive five, ten years ago, perhaps these days is no longer defensive. Are you having to relook at these definitions by implication also the asset classes that go with it? I remember reading towards the end of last year, in fact at the beginning of the year, how the bond market did extremely not so well. When you look at the equity market, it surprised everybody because everybody was defensive. Look, the reality is at the moment, wh why I think you say that the markets have changed is yeah. that central banks have flooded the market with liquidity. Yes. And the situation there is it's created a lot of seeming stability in the markets, which is obvious for the obvious benefit of, of, of all investors. But the question is when that changes. Uh, so in the longer term, can that be sustained? And obviously the question is, or the answer is... So you're not changing so. your definition no. of these asset classes no, and what they all. represent? No, not at all. I think for us it's very important to be consistent and to be stable. Even I just wanted to come back to quite an important point here is, is that what you, the way I understand you've described this is that you said we will pro provide a, a certain level of protection. Yes. We're not protecting the portfolio completely from any capital loss. Yeah. What sort of protection are you building in place and, and over what sort of time periods? Thanks for asking that. Very important in the absolute return philosophy is uh, the return generating but also then the preserv preservation of capital and as you say that typically happens over a time period so typically what you have is that the uh, protection period that we aim for is to preserve capital over a one-year period shorter periods are just too expensive mm -hmm. because you can think about it as you mentioned earlier you've got a certain portion of your portfolio that effectively gives you interest which in a sense pays for some of the protection yeah. but over a one month or a two month period there's not a lot of interest especially at low returns yeah. so you protect the portfolio we do protect on, a, on a sort of one year rolling that's basis. right with a view over a one year period but it depends on on specific mandates some, so some people are just not willing to stomach returns or losses of returns even over a one month period and obviously you would uh, do that in a specific way. All of these things can be done using derivatives. The real question is how much return can you expect if you are too over uh, conservative? Yeah. So that's the big thing. It's always that balance between how much return you can get versus the amount of protection that you can find. So that's the real trick, trying to find the correct risk appetite. Yeah. So you can take, you can take, you can stomach, uh, you try and protect the portfolio from losses over a 12-month period, and obviously, yes. uh, to do that, you you buy that, you, you buy that insurance. Uh, the returns that you target, though, they, they they might have to be over a longer period. Is that right? That is typically the way that it works. So uh, frequently, these type of mandates are measured over a three-year period against CPI plus five, for example, as we said earlier. Okay. okay. Quick education trip. So what is defensive? So defensive would be anything like that, that where we have the perception that there are not frequent losses or big losses associated with it. What's Money frequent? Market. What's frequent? So uh, once every five years, for okay. example. Okay. Okay. So uh, money market type investments where right. we've got a degree of safety of capital. Bonds to a lesser extent, depending on where you play on the duration curve. Corporate bonds, sovereign bonds? Co corporate, uh, obviously uh, we do invest in corporate bonds, we invest in sovereign bonds. Uh, your sovereign bonds obviously are going to have the perception of more capital uh, than, your, than your corporate bonds. Even your capital se security. You run a couple uh, of different funds uh, tailored Correct. to those different risk levels. So yes. CPI plus five is, is quite an aggressive fund in, in your, in your <coughs> basket of funds. Yeah, so typically in the market CPI plus five is the most common. 
uh, but you do find CPI plus six funds. Uh, we have a range of funds ranging from sort of CPI plus two, which is more almost a money market type thing, up to CPI plus six. The, the, the bulk of the funds are at CPI plus five though. And for the average person that's perhaps uh, considering retiring at 65 or, or, yeah. or 60, let's use 65 for an example, or, or when do you start using uh, absolute return funds and how do you sort of blend them into an investor's portfolio? I love your question because I think the perception is that people should be invested in absolute return funds close to retirement. For me, it's a philosophy of always being invested with them because the point is avoid losses. You know, so as a young person, if you can vo avoid losses, if you had in 1987 and you didn't participate in the financial crash then, if you looked at the, at the 1990s and the losses that you had in the markets then, if you avoided that, think of the opportunity to build on, on the capital that you would have saved. So for us, it's more a, s a story of it's, a, it's an investment style and it's an investment proposition that you can take through your life. But for people close to retirement, it, obvi it has obvious benefits as we said that we target to, to, to not to lose capital. Okay, and obviously giving up some of, to buy that insurance and, and to use the derivatives, you're giving up some of the, the top end as well. So we saw the market last year did 27% in total return yeah. terms on yeah. the JSC. Um, how would, how would a, a fund like a CPI plus 5% fund perform in that environment? Uh, CPI, some of our CPI fi plus 5 funds did 20% last year. Okay. So in other words, you can see that it's not the, mm -hmm. it's not the mm -hmm. equity market, uh, in equilibrium, with other words, over time, you would expect that we outperform the CPI plus five target. But uh, and if you look at it over a long period of time, you would hope that you get a similar type of return to the the balanced type funds. In a bull market, uh, I think it's safe to say that because of the protection that you invoke, you're not going to capture the same returns as a balanced fund will. Yeah. Okay. Some people have suggested that perhaps equities are not as risky as they've always been perceived to be, especially when you look at returns over the past sometimes decades, sometimes over two decades ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a great question. Um, I think there's a lot of investment risk in equities. I mean, sure. if you look at the, at, at the moment uh, where we are in the market, we've, we've come a long way, as you mentioned at the moment, with the returns that we've had last year. Yeah. It's about earnings this year, but it's also about perceptions. If you look at our retail sector, for example, what are the perceptions of offshore holders where the these uh, the sector has, has 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 gained prominence in the last in the last couple of years? So, you, I, I think you've got to be careful. The equity market can be ruthless mm -hmm. when it starts mm -hmm. selling down. I'm not saying don't invest in equities. We yeah. love equities. Yeah. We like risk. For us, it's the balance. Trying to understand risk versus return and making sure that we capture as much of the risk uh, versus the return. Final thoughts. You've got 30 seconds. Final thoughts. I think investment, absolute return investments, for us specifically at Standard, is, is a passion where we try and give people as much return in the market, but we believe passionately about protecting capital. And also you can start early. That's correct.